Let me see. Hello. This is my first time actually doing this with anybody. What up, what up? <laughs> okay, let me see. Try that K aggressive P. Let me set this up. Hold up. What up? What up? This is my first time actually doing this um, IG live. Hold on one second, y'all. Brother Chill, what's going on? What up, what up, brother Nick Hamilton? Sonzi, what up? Bubba, what's going on? How y'all feeling during this quarantine time? It's officially my first Instagram live ever. Brother Bubba, let's do let's do that podcast. Eddie, brother Eddie, we still have to uh still gotta link up for that for that fitness that fitness live. I need it. I've been eating like crazy during quarantine. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying enjoying the day. <laughs> I just heard you say you've been eating a lot. Yeah, I've been eating so bad. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to get back. I'm trying to get back on track, but Yeah, me too. Every day I keep saying I'm 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 gonna do it tomorrow, but I really think I'm gonna do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but the other day you were working out. Yeah. Well, I've been working out, but eating more than I than I work out. So uh it's kinda like hibernation. <laughs> right, the working out kind of balances out the bad eating. Yeah. Right. We have to eat good because we have to keep our immune system strong. That's what I keep telling myself. So Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I, I'm uh I'm working on it. There's there's a few um few meals that I'm trying to uh cook, but then also there's like those meal delivery services that I've been looking at because I'm like you know. <laughs> right. And Are you a little bit nervous about people touching your food? You know, sometimes I am. Um, especially like if it was delivery, I'm more nervous, but opposed to like actually going and picking it up, I, I haven't been as nervous. How about you? Right. I mean, I, you know, have been, I've, there's a couple of places that I really like that have delivery service, like restaurants. Like, I, I love Matsuhisa. And I saw on their website, they actually have pickup five to eight. And oh. I want to support local businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, but then, I, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, you know? A, it's a catch. You know, because, like, there's one place by me. It's like, um, I can't think of the name, but it's like this expensive steakhouse or whatnot. And 
everything is 60% off. If you spend over $100, they take off 60%. And they're doing it like at all of the, um, this, like the luxury steakhouses. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that. <laughs> I mean, it's good because you're supporting those restaurants and restaurants are, you know, obviously getting hit super hard. So yeah. I think ultimately it's a good thing. Yeah, you know, and they give you a card every time that you come, like a thank you card. So, you know, whatever oh, I can do. <laughs> yeah. That's so <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm glad that um, we finally get to um, join each other in a conversation. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't make it happen when life was just normal. So it's like... Yeah. <laughs> You know, this is what what D Nice says. It's like this. There's so many good things about this quarantine, it's bringing so many people closer together mm -hmm. um, that we don't normally have time for or make time for in our daily lives. So, yeah, there's a lot of blessings that come out of this. Yeah, it's, it's been beautiful. Um, and so I wanted to uh, start off by telling everyone how how we met, um, <laughs> which was amazing. Um, I was at the barber shop. And Ellen came in with her daughter, and they had like my two daughters, of... my son. I got three of them. Okay, so well, they were all with you, right? Yes, yes. So son and two daughters, um, and they all came into the barber shop with a lot of candy bars that they were um, given from the candy shop next door. And you know, I was getting my hair cut, and she was talking about the importance of teaching them how to give back. And it was crazy. I didn't know that it was her. And then one of the barbers was like, oh, my God, I'm such a huge fan. And, you know, I'm here getting my hair cut. And then I'm like, oh, before she leaves, like, let's take a selfie. And then I looked at the selfie. And when I got in the car and I realized that half of my hair was cut and the other half <laughs> wasn't. So I'm like, oh, we're not going to post that. But <laughs> I, you know, keep it in the memory. So it was, a, you know, a great meeting you for sure. Thanks. Likewise, For that was sure. a super fun day. So the so the part two to that story is, so that's a fantastic local business um, here in Los Angeles. It's called Compartes Chocolate, and um, they make really they have like amazing um, artwork on the boxes, mm -hmm. and they do all these different flavors, and um, you know they have like a hundred different, and they have stores like in malls. They have whole stores. The packaging is really, really dope. I mean, it's the whole company. I mean, you notice Compartes because of the packaging. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing branding. And that was it. And they were, they had invited, they knew I was a fan because I get chocolate from them. And I'd reached out to them on social media. And they invited me to come in with my kids and watch, so the kids could watch them make chocolate. Mm -hmm. And it's all these amazing Los Angeles women who have been making chocolate for like 40, 50 years. The guy who runs it inherited the business from his grandfather. So it's like third generation. And it's right on La Brea next to the um, barbershop. Mm -hmm. And so the kids got to go in and make chocolate. And they gave us bags and bags of chocolate. <laughs> so I was like, there's no way we can take all this chocolate home. So I saw the barbershop and like, let's go in and, you know, spread the love. We got yeah. love. Now spread it. So, um, and that was a nice lesson for the kids to see someone did something kind for you. Now you take that and you go do something kind for someone else. Yeah. To stay, they still had a lot of chocolate that day. <laughs> when we were home, they were bouncing off the walls. That was like, <laughs> I lost my cool that afternoon for sure. When I got home. That's so beautiful. How how old are they? They are ten, five, and three. Oh, amazing. Yeah, they they were so kind. <laughs> For sure, you know, I that, that warms my heart, you know, to see people teach, you know, kids how to give back and how to show love and compassion, especially in this generation where everybody's afraid of each other, you know, but for you to teach them that, like, you know, it's it's okay, you know, to be compassionate and to show love that that right, you know. Yeah, I, I credit my, sort of where I grew up with that. I think I grew up in Boston. Um. And in obviously in the 80s, I, it, and uh, Boston is not the kindest city, and it's not the most compassionate city. It's a lot of racism in Boston. But um, there's this real sort of like 
you know, Kennedy sort of democratic mentality and blue collar spirit of, you know, of helping out your neighbor. So it's a very interesting city because there's a lot going on. But now I haven't lived there in 25 years. Yeah. But, um, but, but there's, when I grew up, there was a lot of this incredible racism and uh, that, you know, Bill Russell talks a lot about if you're a basketball fan and, um, but then there's also this sort of like very blue collar, very Kennedy esque sort of, you know, help each other out mentality. So it's an interesting place to grow up for sure. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the question, first question is, what are you doing during quarantine? What what's your routine? <laughs> uh, I'm doing a lot, um, a lot more uh, cooking and cleaning than I normally do. I do like to cook and I cook a lot, but I normally don't. And I, I normally just cook breakfast and dinner. I don't normally cook lunch too for the kids because they're usually at school. Um, so I'm cooking more than I do. I'm cleaning more than I do. I have lucky enough to have a housekeeper. So I usually have a housekeeper. So she helps out with all the dishes and all the kitchen because I just make the kids breakfast and then I have to fly to work. Yeah. Um, so I don't have her right now. So I'm doing a lot more cleaning than I'm, than I normally do in laundry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, you know, playing with the kids and um, doing a lot of lives um, with different people. And that's it, really. I don't have a lot of time. You asked me before if I meditate. I do meditate. I do transcendental meditation. I just did 10 minutes before I jumped on this call with you. Um, and I'm working out every day. Um, I, I have to get up super early to try to do that because the kids are up early. So um, it's hard. It's challenging for me to get time to, you know, not get into So... Yeah. I'm trying to, you know, I feel like I'm trying to stay on a schedule as much as I can. It's helping. Yeah, I, I've been I've been working on that too. And how how long have you been, you know, doing TM transcendental meditation? I would say about four years. Oh, amazing! Because I don't know if people know, but that's like the ultimate level. <laughs> because like the guy who's helping me write my book, he's a. Um, uh, you know, he has been doing it for like 30 years and he's a, you know, psychologist. So he keeps telling me like, go and do it, go and do it. So I've been doing like different meditations, like using Budify apps and guide it, but he keeps telling me to do TM and I've been putting it off. So I guess this is like, this is one of those signs <laughs> that, that I yeah. should. You know. the, um, David Lynch has the Center for Transcendental Meditation. It's right on Highland here in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I went to, uh, I went there to learn. Um, I think it's like a two day course. Um, it's just a couple of hours. Um, it's a little pricey, but he takes, you know, his David Lynch's Center for Transcendental Meditation goes into prisons and schools in low income neighborhoods and teaches Transcendental Meditation um, to uh, incarcerated people, to uh, school children, to veterans who've experienced trauma. Um, so I, I, I felt fine about paying that much money to learn. To yeah. <laughs> I like where he spreads his message. So I'm okay to give him money. That's beautiful. <laughs> For sure. Um, so the next I'm one gonna, is... I was just going to walk, Nathan, and plug in my phone because it's like burns up my battery like crazy. Oh, I know. I had to like plug mine in, leave it plugged in. Hi, Stells. Hey, Stells, you know who I'm talking to? So Stella's here. Oh, she is? <laughs> oh, no, is this that guy that we went to sushi with? No, it's not. No, it's not Millie Bobby Brown. She wishes you were <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown. No, remember, um, remember the day that um, we went to Comparte's to make chocolate, and then we went oh, into yeah. the barber shop? Oh, yeah. This is Nathan. Say hi. Just say hi, Stells. Say hi to Nathan. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, Nathan oh, and I met we went into the, uh, we went into the, um, member of the barbershop and gave away some of the chocolate that we were gifted. 
my favorite chocolate. I know your favorite chocolate, but that's how we became friends. See? Oh, okay. See, so blessings come out of blessings. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm on a live, sweetie. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, farewell. You, you, you good? Yes, I'm okay. fine. Where are you going with that bag of sugar? Hold on, wait a second. <laughs> no problem. With this bag of sugar. I'm doing experiments. What kind of experiments? I don't know. Okay, but we need this. Yeah. I, I, we need this to make cakes. All those cakes you like to make. But I don't. Let Let me just. Can I get just some? So so look what I catch her sneaking off with. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I was making. She's so She's tiptoeing oh, behind me. Let me explain. Let me explain. Go ahead. Go, go do your experiments without my no, one bag I, of sugar that I need. I need the sugar, though. I need it. Please don't make a mess. I won't. Come on. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm doing That's during hilarious. quarantine. This is what I'm doing. I am keeping it 100. You got this a monitor. This is happening. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, everybody keeps asking me like to ask you for your cake recipes and the questions. Huh? Mm. And I'm like, what's the cake recipes? <laughs> I just go on, I just Google it. Mm -hmm. You know, I made this amazing vegan cake the other night. Um, it's on a website called The Healthy French Wife. Mm. And it's a vegan orange cake. And I have, um, lucky enough to have an orange tree in my backyard. And so I have all these oranges. So I um, looked up that, and, and it's a delicious vegan recipe for orange cake. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> what was that called again, the website? The Healthy French Wife. The Healthy French Wife. Okay, so people get that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, I, I've, um, every restaurant that's vegan around here is closed, so I've been trying recipes and... I made vegan pancakes the other day, and they were just too chewy. I have not been able to <laughs> make them huh. right. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky for sure. It's challenging. I haven't tried vegan pancakes. I always put, I always put an egg in them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's a couple of really good companies that I love that make that company Garden. Do you know that company Garden? Garden. Like, yeah, G A R. D I N, I think oh, it's frozen. Like notes. they have like frozen like chicken, like chicken marsala or you know just like fake chicken things, mm -hmm. and then corn, um, Q U O R N, is another company that makes amazing um, fake chicken nuggets that I give my kids. Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been trying, you know, to find the best, but it's always a hit or miss. I'll, I'll check those out, though, for sure. Hold on one second. I got to grab my dog. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my Aww. dog, he's, he's blind, and so I left him on the chair, and he couldn't get off. How old is he? He's 15. Aww. He's so old. He can't see or hear. Aww. It's, it's great that you're taking care of him, though. I was watching this video on Twitter the other day. I have to send it to you. And it's this dog, and it lost his um, left back leg, hind leg. Mm -hmm. And so it always tries to like scratch itself and it forgets that it's not there. But then the owner like stops and does it for him. Like that video. I was just like, <laughs> so great. That, you know? Yeah. I was watching that video like yesterday. I was like, have you seen that poodle with no front front arms? No. There's like a, po I, I follow a million dog rescues. It's like, <laughs> My Instagram porn is like rescue sites. Um, and she has, she's a white poodle and she has no front legs. And she just runs around on her back legs and she jumps and she's so cute. I love that. It's, you know, it's like dogs, they don't remember, you know? 
that's why like that's why it was so beautiful it's like you know a lot of times we remember our scars and our wounds and it makes us hard makes it hard for us to continue at times but like to see a dog just like you know happy no matter what it's almost like just keep living you know so i love that yeah <laughs> for sure. they don't have the pressures that we have either yeah <laughs> they don't worry about or the, you know they don't they don't let things get to them i don't know I do yeah. wish I I do wish I knew what they were thinking at the time, but yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, what books are you reading or audio books are you listening to? Mm -mm, no, none, none. <laughs> none right now. No time for any of that. Yeah, well, I can tell with that with that uh, background. <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah, yeah. I have three kids, four dogs, a husband. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, I usually sneak in mine when I work out. Okay, that's good. My audio. Uh huh. Yeah. That's good. What are you yeah. reading right now? Um, let me think. Or listening to. So, what I'm listening to now is a John Maxwell book, and it's called "Talent Is Never Enough." Um, it's super dope because. Sometimes we forget that our talent isn't what got us there is the work ethic. And a lot of people, you know, who are talented don't have the work ethic. And, you know, life's a bit harder. So, you know, so I'm like halfway through that one. I'll let you know how it is. But, it's you know, it's pretty good. It was it was referred to me. I try to, you know, listen to as much as I, as I can, um, you know, while driving and working out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been drinking a lot of water. Um, Me too. So the next one would be, what's something you're working to overcome? Um, I guess maybe feeling like I have to uh, be being productive all day long. I guess because I have the kids, I feel like a real responsibility and they're not in school right now and they can't go to the park. And, um, I guess I feel a little bit of pressure to sort of like make every day great for them yeah. and like, you know, not sort of put any fear onto them or anxiety about this, what's going on. So I'm trying to, you know, make, you know, on Easter bunny pancakes and a great lunch and a great dinner and take them outside to play. And, you know, I'm, I guess I, I have to, I can just chill and just lay around. Yeah. Which is kind of hard for me to, to yeah. just kind of chill and lay around. Mm -hmm. You know, my workout time is like, that's my time that I take and my little 10 minute meditations. But you know, that's really it. I, I'm still doing something. I'm never kind of just like chilling. Yeah, I understand. I'm gonna ask you one more, well, one and a half more that I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you go. I know you probably have a crazy day over there. Um so we'll ask, what is your philosophy of life? What is your philosophy of life? I mean, I do. I think we just have to be grateful for everything every day. Mm -hmm. We have to find gratitude in whatever we have. There's always someone who has it worse, you know. Um, certainly, been super lucky in my life, um, and you know, have a lot of hustle ethic as well. But a lot of it is luck, um, mm -hmm. just by sheer, you know, luck of being born in the United States. You know, as as opposed to you know, the Philippines or South Sudan or somewhere where it doesn't matter how smart you are and how much hustle you have, there's sometimes no getting out of there, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that, um, I, I think, you know, we just have to be grateful and, and be kind to yourself. Yeah. Not be too hard, not be too hard on yourself. I love that. that that's something I'm practicing is, you know, trying not to be too hard on myself, you know, because, I think we put more pressure on ourselves than, than life does. <laughs> you know, I think that we cause a lot of our, you know, anxiety and nervousness and just like the need to feel like we should be more, you know, instead and of I just think being. 
Yeah, I think that, sorry to interrupt you. I think, no, no. I think that to, to go back to my earlier point of like me just trying to chill is I think to some extent, you know, your generation and the in, Instagram and media has sort of turned it into a complete hustle culture, you know, and we don't, it's a consumer culture. It's a hustle culture. Everyone has to do more, be better, make more money, work harder. And it's like, I think now more than ever, this is teaching us that we, we don't, we, we can't do that right now. Yeah. The, the universe, whatever this is, is forcing us to just be still. Mm -hmm. And so we have to go with that. And maybe we're not supposed to hustle so hard. Maybe we're not supposed to keep trying to get, 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 get more, 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 more. Yeah. Does that make us happy? Are we happy? You know, um, so I think this is a really interesting. I know people are struggling right now. And this is a really, really challenging time for a lot of people. And I don't want to by any means diminish that um, or be insensitive to people's struggles. Yeah. Um, but if we're trying to find the silver lining in this, I do think it's quite ironic that like, you know, the sky is clear, the water is clear. I think mother nature really needed us to chill the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I 100% I agree. I definitely agree. We took it too far. We take it too far. You know, planes, trains, automobiles, got to get this, got to get that, got to have this, got to have that. I mean, I'm 100% guilty of it. Yeah. I hustle my ass off. I mean, normally I wake up at 530 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I can't get enough accomplished in my day. Yeah. And maybe I don't need to hustle that hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love that. I, you know, I think I'm guilty of it, too. You know, I know I'm guilty of it, too. You know, waking up at 430 to do more and to feel like less. You know, to work hard every day and make a lot of money, but then at the end of the night, you know, just be exhausted and empty sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like you make, sometimes you make more, but feel less, you know? And then you got to constantly make more to feel like more. You know? Yeah, I mean, when we, I mean, you know, I've been, you know, D-Nice has been having amazing live Instagrams constantly. And it's like, I mean, I do dance in my kitchen a lot, <laughs> but like, I get to see all these people that I know on his Instagram and we're just really just taking time to just sit around the kitchen and just yeah. dance and have a cup of tea mm -hmm. and just, you know, which is the human connection and we're all connecting through social media, yeah. obviously, because we can't connect in person, but at least we're connecting because I feel like not just with social media, but we just swipe and look at people and we're like, okay, we know what she's doing. We know what he's doing. We don't really actually check in. So as hard yeah. as it is for some people, and I know some people are isolated and feeling lonely is a real thing and mental illness is a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, there are blessings if, if, yeah. if you're able to find them. Agreed. Okay. So one more before I ask you about um, America's Food Fund. The question is, what is something memorable that you keep in your wallet oh nothing i don't nothing. okay, <laughs> okay. No, i don't no, need to no, carry no. a wallet i like oh, okay. and you know i just switch mm -hmm. that with my outfits and throw my stuff in there and... i love that <laughs> so the last question is um can you tell uh people more about america's food fund um and how they can help and get involved i see what you all are doing over there and you know it's amazing. So I just want people to know more. Yeah, I'm not really, I can't really take credit for anything. Um, Leo DiCaprio reached out and asked that I'm supporting it. They, they, uh, he created America's Food Fund with a couple other folks. And the link is, is on my Instagram page. And really all I did was write a big fat check. Oh, that's amazing. Um, everybody I mean, else that's... is doing the work. Um, so uh, I, 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 you know, I know that he's, you know, very serious about these causes that he supports. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a big wildlife advocate and environmental advocate. So I'm a big fan of his as well as a friend. And, um, and I know that he, you know, he really cares and has a deep spirit and a deep heart. So I <laughs> luckily I didn't have to do much, you know, he sent me yeah. the link and he was like, this is what we're doing. 
and um, and I posted the link on my page and just sent some money over. And um, you know, food is important. I mean, these 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 food lines in Texas are horrifying. It, this is unbelievable that we're experiencing um, that people are experiencing this this lack of food here in the United States. You know. The other thing that's crazy is like the fact that like we're buying PPE from China yeah. when there's plenty of there's plenty of cities, you know, whether it's Detroit, whether it's I don't middle of the country. I mean, there's so many towns that could use factories that people could use jobs. Um, I hope that some, you know, other good comes out of this. And we bring some of this manufacturing back to the United States and give people right here jobs. Yeah, um, I agree. I definitely agree. We all well, need to vote. We all need to vote. For sure. Well, I want to let you get back to your family. Um, thank you so much for jumping on live with me. I look of forward course, to Nate. talking more nice to, soon. It was nice <laughs> to talk sure. to you finally. You too. Okay, that, stay well. You too. And uh, and we'll talk soon. All right, for sure. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Eli.